Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. We have already seen the basics of I2C communication protocol and hardware implementation of I2C bus. This time we will see frame structure of I2C communication protocol and how is data transferred or received over I2C bus with a simple analogy. So let's go for a ride. Now we'll look into the frame structure and how the data is transferred or received from the bus. The bit frame is nothing but the sequence of bits which indicates the receiver about the starting point and ending point of the data communication. This data frame is standard for each communication protocol. It helps each device to understand the pattern of talking. Bit frame of I2C is consists of a start bit. After start bit, the master addresses the receiver. So there comes the slave address, which is either 7 bit or 11 bit sequence. Then master sends a read or write signal. After the sequence, the slave gives an acknowledgement. Once the acknowledgement is received, one more addressing bit sequence comes which addresses the internal registers of slaves from which the master wants to read or write. After this bit sequence, there comes the acknowledgement again. And after that, the actual 8-bit data is sent or received, following a final acknowledgement bit. And at the end, there comes the stop bit to notify the slave that the communication has ended. Now let's see this data frame with an example, which is very popular when I2C master is a microcontroller and slave device is RTC DS1307IC. RTC is basically a clock which runs continuously even if the device is off. So if you buy an RTC from the market, first we need to configure it with the current day, date, month, year and time. So what we do is, initially we write its corresponding registers and then we read all the inputs of time and dates later on. So we will try to understand read and write frames of RTC. First step is to configure an RTC IC. First is the start bit. Initially both SCL line and SDL lines are idle. When any device needs to talk, it starts from the start bit. So in the start bit, the SDL line is pulled to logic level low, keeping SCL line high. This high to low transition on SDL line generates an interrupt and slaves prepare for the communication. Now, master sends the 7-bit slave address over the bus. And after that, it sends read or write bit. The data line changes its status when the SCL line goes from logic level high to logic low. Check this, if the transmitter wants to send 1 and SDL line is low initially, then it will change the SDL line to 1 only when the SCL is low. And the data is sampled at the receiver side when the SCL line transits from low to high logic level. And the master changes the state of the SDL line when the SCL line goes low again. This is kind of a tricky part, but you'll understand if you see the full data frame structure. Now comes the 8 clock pulse, where master decides to read or write operation. If the master wants to send some data to the slave, it will pull SDL line to logic low. And if it is receiving, then it will pull SDL line to logic high. Right now, we need to write the data in the slave device. 
Let's see the analogy of I2C communication. Consider this is Parag and there are multiple people with whom Parag can talk. And one of them is Akshay. Akshay has a son whose name is Guddu. Parag wants to give Guddu a small toy car as a gift. Now let's compare this analogy with electronic terms. Parag is the master in our case, that is microcontroller. Akshay is one of the slaves. Let's consider him as a RTC chip. And Akshay's son Guddu is RTC's register. If Parag wants to talk with Guddu, he will have to go through Akshay. Giving a card to Guddu is configuring data in the RTC chips register. Now Parag will initiate the communication with start bit. Then master will send a 7 bit address over the I2C bus. This address bit sequence is 7 bit of 1s and zeros. This is the MSB bit and this will be the LSB of address. After that, the master will send a read or write bit on the bus. Then the slave RTC chip will give an acknowledgement to the master notifying that it is present on the bus. Now the master will send the register address of the slave device. After this bit sequence, the slave will give an acknowledgement notifying that he has received this command. And finally, the master microcontroller will send the actual data to configure the current day, date, month, year and time in the RTC chip. And just like that, Parag will give the toy car to Akshay's son. After configuring the RTC chip, the chip will send an acknowledgement bit to the master. And finally, the master will send the stop bit to end the communication. You know, if the master wants to send more data to the slave device, it does not have to do all the initial process again. It will just add one more bit sequence of data after acknowledgement and send to the slave device before the stop bit. And he can do it several times. So after giving the toy card to Guddu, Parag can give more gifts one after another. If you look closely at this frame structure, the bus gives an acknowledgement after every data bit sequence. Well, if one of the sequence is not received properly to the slave, or the slave gets disconnected due to any reason, the slave will not give an acknowledgement to the master, and it is called as NAC. When the master receives NAC, he can generate either the stop bit condition to about the communication or he will start from the top. Now we have configured the RTC chip. When the system is online, master wants to get a timestamp from this chip. So we need to read the data from the RTC chip from the I2C bus. If you check the analogy, Guddu has got the present, but Parag wants to know how he is doing. Did he like the gift and many more such things. So just like earlier cycle, the master will initiate the communication with start bit. After that, it will push the slave address on the bus. Now on read or write bit, the master will set one which will notify the slave that master wants to read the data. Now the slave gives an acknowledgement and master will send the register address to the slave. This will notify the slave that he needs to send the data from its register. So the slave gives an acknowledgement and the slave sends an 8-bit data sequence to the master microcontroller. When the master receives the data from the slave, he'll give an acknowledgement to the slave. And finally, the master will stop the communication. Well, that's how the data is transferred and received in the I2C communication protocol. 
I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And finally, thanks for watching.